Hello, it's Dave here from Megapoints Controllers. Today we're going to have an early look at the upcoming PC interface that I've been developing. One of the reasons for shooting this video is to let you see what I've achieved so far. Invite any comments and you can get back to me through the email address on the website. And if you have any experience interfacing systems to JMRI, I would be particularly keen to hear from you if I could get some assistance to actually interface this with a train automation software. But for now, let's have a look and see what we've got. So we've just seen the unit boot up. It's connected to a multi-panel and uh, you can't see the commands because there's no local echo. After all, it would normally be a PC that's entering commands. But if I, for example, query the state of points number one, I'm typing P001 then it echoes back the status and you can see 0.001 are not set so they're zero the queue indicates that this information was provided because it was a query if i want to see a range p001 to uh, p008 i enter p001 p008 p001 p008 and it shows me uh, p001 2p008 and you can see at this point none of them are set. If I want to change a set of points then I could enter p001 colon 01 to turn it on and what happens now is it's shown me the current status but instead of a Q it's an S. That's because there was a state change on the network and any changes immediately are reported by this to the PC. So this is what the PC interfaces or the PC software is looking for. So it would see points one change to a one and uh, for extra information I've just bolted on the reason for that change. You can also query the feedback as well. So if I was to do F001 you could see the status of feedback channel one or you could dump the lot. F001, F192 and you get a list of everything out to the screen. Obviously you can't change the feedback, only the, um, the feedback system can do that based on what it detects. So the command structure is very simple. Um, it's straightforward and at this point the software is where it's at and I'm, I'm kind of curious, do I have the structure of the commands right in an easy way for PC software to read and um, how do we take it to the next level? If you take a look at this slide, it shows you the command structure. So the bold items are what would be entered in via the serial port and the um, non-bold is what's returned. So at the top left for reading points, you've got, for example, P100 you might enter, carriage return, and then the interface would return P100 colon 00 colon Q. And this indicates that points 100 are not set or zero. Uh, the queue indicates that the response is because of a query. You can also enter ranges of commands. So P001, P008, enter, would list all of the points from uh, P001 down to P008. It's similar for feedback. If we look at the feedback slide now, you can type in F001 and it'll show you the status of feedback channel one. Or again, ranges, so you could query the entire feedback system by entering F001 to F192 and it would dump the lot. In the example here, it's doing 20 to 26. If we look at the next slide, um, it shows you that uh, entering a P001 colon 01, so colon and then a number 01 or 00, would set the points to either on or off. And uh, this time, when uh, the command is echoed back to, the, and this time the system generates a system message, it ends with the S on the second circle, and you so on this example, you can see I've entered P001 colon 01 and it returns P001 colon 01 S. And the S means it's a system generated uh, state message. So it doesn't echo the command. What it does is echoes the changes as they're made to the system. And again, to, to turn the points off, the second command is P00100 and that would 
turn the points off as well. So the command is very simple and uh, I'll show it you working now. So on this little demo board here, I have a pair of points operated by solenoids. I have a small loco here. I have four block detectors here, here, here and here. These are measuring current and I have a pair of point position indicators. So as the points move, these will also provide a readout from the points. All this feedback information is being sent to the multi-panel via the feedback module and there's a solenoid driver here to operate the two solenoids. The mimic panel for this is this little panel here and you can see how the points are set and where the loco is with the red light. Going off screen I have the mock-up PC interface which is connected to the computer and I'll show you the screen in a second and there's a DCC interface as well. So if I query so if I query the first set of points, you can see that they're set for zero, which means straight ahead or not turned. And you can see here that is the case. If I operate the panel, observe on the screen as I press the panel button, there's two system events. The first one is the point moving here, and point one has moved on. And secondly, feedback channel nine, F009, has also moved on. So we're reading not only the button push from the mimic panel, but we're also reading when the points have actually moved through the point position indicator. If I move it back, and then you can see there's a little delay and the feedback is also reporting on the screen. If I move points two by hand, you'll see it just generates a feedback event. Uh, feedback channel 10 is on. You can see the mimic panel has changed as well because it's also sharing this data and if I move it back and then the mimic panel moves back and the screen has also gone straight. So I can issue the commands from the PC or uh, I can issue them from any part of the system. So I have the DCC uh, handset connected. If I operate an accessory here you saw the points move, the panel changed, the points moved and the feedback indicator on the PC screen has changed here. Let's do channel 2, so keep your eye on the screen and there's the two events. The points moved on, the feedback channel which is channel 10 is also on. So this is being instantly reported back to the PC and off. So. If, for example, uh, I wanted to move more points, uh, let's run a macro and move 24, I think. You can see these are the DCC commands coming into the system. Oh, it's moved from 1 to 29. That's more than I actually have. But you can see the principle. The handset was issuing DCC command macros, and the system was immediately um, logging that to the PC for action. Let's move them all back. You can see the commands for the points changing, but only the first two have feedback attached. Here's the first one. That's coming in at this point, and there's another feedback event buried in here as well. But the basic idea is, whatever state your system is when it changes, you'll see an S message to indicate a state change. Or if you were to query it by hand, for example, let's query the first two. You can see when I type P001, P002, after resting on my keyboard, get the garbled command, um, it reports the status of those ending in the queue. And if I move the loco around, let's move the loco onto block two. You can see now we've also generated uh, block two became occupied and feedback channel one or block one became vacant. And let's move it back. And now we get the reverse move some points and let's put the loco into this siding here and as it moves we can follow it round and this information is being displayed. So again this is really a very early look at the software, an appeal for help. If you've experienced writing interfaces to products like JMRI <clears throat> I'd very much like to hear from you because I really don't have skills in those products so I'd appreciate any help I might get. Thanks for watching and I hope it was of interest.